Hi, my name's Prin- Nope, my name is not Princess Aspie, my name's Chloe. Hi, my name's Chloe Hayden, otherwise known as Princess Aspie, and welcome to my channel. So I've decided that I'm going to start a new series. I've decided that I'm going to start a new series based on books or movies or TV shows or musicals or this or that that have got characters with Asperger's in it. Now these characters might not exactly be diagnosed with Asperger's, but they're just characters that I look at and go, mm, you remind me of me. I've already done a video quite similar to this where I've spoken about the fairies from Sleeping Beauty. So that's just going to kind of add on to the series. This is what the series is about. And what better way to hit off my very first proper video of this series with my favourite movie of all time ever to be invented. I love it. Now for anyone that knows me, you know there's only going to be two movies which I'm going to be able to watch time in and time out again and 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 again. That's not Disney. <laughs> These movies are Astro Boy and Mr. Megorum's Wonder Emporium. I'm going to be speaking about the second one. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly, highly recommend that you get off the bed, couch, chair, car that you're sitting on, go to the nearest Target or Kmart, pick it up, watch it, and then come back here so you can feel the feelings I'm feeling with me. This video will be here when you get back. Go! Now! Quick! I'll be here. I'll wait for you. Fantastic! Welcome back! Now I can't explain what it was exactly that drew me to this movie in the first place. Maybe it's because it was a whole bundle of things, which I wasn't exactly aware of myself yet. Do you ever see something which just makes you feel so many emotions at once? Your entire body is tingling with happiness and sadness and excitement and magic and... Is that just me? Wonderful. Great. Cool. Yeah, well, this movie's done it to me. I'm often told that the deepness and thoroughness of my obsessions are a little bit extreme and over the top. I mean, what other 18 year old do you know that cries over children's movies right from the opening credits? Me! <laughs> but hey, we've already recognised that I'm not very typical, so we can just move on from that. I'm going to try and do my absolute best to describe this movie in the way it should be described and talk about it in the way it should be talked about, but to be honest, I'm not going to be able to give it justice. Something I absolutely adore about this movie in particular is how beautifully, wonderfully and carefully it describes four different types of points of view of people with Asperger's Syndrome. This movie has four main characters. Eric, the 10 year old boy with an extravagant hat collection who finds it really difficult to make friends his own age and instead tries to make friends with the occasional squirrel or adult who's just as quirky as he is. Molly, the finger tapping, piano playing, frustrated child prodigy genius who knows that there's potential inside of her but just doesn't quite know how to let it out just yet. Henry, the mutant, the socially awkward adult businessman. And my all time favourite character in ever the existence of anything ever to be created who I am so deeply fond of, obsessed with, will love for the rest of my life, Mr. Megorium. The brilliant 243 year old toy inventor who's possibly lived this long due to his incapability of growing bored. His life is a daily adventure and he's completely comfortable in his own weird and quirky ways. Oh how I adore this movie. The first time I watched this movie as an inquisitive 10 year old, I was entranced by the magical toy store, the exciting colours of the opening credits, the magic that the entire movie held. I instantly became addicted. A little bit obsessed. Alright, a lot obsessed. However, it didn't become one of my things until a few years later when I went into a video shop, saw the magical cover which caught my eye, brought it home, and that was the end of it. That's when I became obsessed. That's when I fell in love with the delightful storyline, the exciting characters which I was starting to realise that I could relate so much to. It's not jaded or loaded with so many innuendos which so many kids movies seem to be plagued with these days. It's not trying to do something that's extraordinary or out of the ordinary. And it's not trying to do something groundbreaking or fashionable. It's unashamedly sentimental which holds an old fashioned storyline, an amazing cast and more quotable lines than The Princess Bride. After watching that movie for quite literally the fourth time that day, I began to grow confused. Why was this movie not more popular? Why were not more people obsessed with it? Why was there not blogs and clothing labels and theme parks dedicated to it? I know, I'm obsessed. We've already cleared that off. Watching this movie, it was so easy for me to be able to relate to every single one of these main characters. Fellow Aspies, take note. Eric struggled to make friends and was ostracised at every turn. Kids his own age didn't want to make friends with him because of how strange, weird and quirky he was. Playing by himself was always the easier option and he was always making these amazing art pieces which adults would even struggle to do and he was making in a matter of minutes. Sometimes he'd connect with animals 
or the occasional adult who was just as quirky as he was. His mum tries to help, but is endlessly worried about her son's incapability to make friends and fit in with the rest of the world. And then there's Mahoney, the frustrated piano playing genius who I was so connected to, who's so, so frustrated. She knows that she's destined for greatness. She knows that there's a sparkle inside of her which she just can't let out yet. She knows that she's worth more than a worker in a toy shop even if it is a magical one. Just like Eric, she has no friends other than this eccentric old man who believes more than anybody in her amazing ways. She's trapped inside of this body which she's unable to release the magic out of. On to Henry, affectionately known as the Mutant. An accountant who Mr. Megorian believes must be something between a counter and a mutant. Henry never once questions the nickname, Possibly because inside he probably actually does feel like a bit of an alien. He tries so hard to be helpful and to make his affections known, but he's often turned down because of how off-putting and strange his ways are. Henry tries so hard to fit into the rest of the world, and it's not until that he finds someone which he feels safe with, which he's actually able to do so. And then on to my beloved favourite, Mr. Megorian. Mr. Megorian's by far my favourite character in any book, movie, TV show, musical, play, anything I've ever read, watched or seen. He's strange and quirky while being completely kind and full of wisdom. He's totally quotable. Instantly we're drawn to his crazy clothes, crazy hair and crazy personality. He doesn't go with what's normal and always wears these weird crazy clothes. As a girl who wears flower crowns and wears clothes which are a little bit out of the ordinary, you can see why this is appealing to me. He goes against the mainstream and questions authority and normality to all extents and he chooses to live life as he darn well pleases. He's optimistic, so optimistic that he's even looking forward to his next great experience, death. And I think that might be why I like this movie so much. Because when you look past all the crazy things, when you look past the mutant, past the extravagant hat collection, past the living fish mobile, past the zebra that eats everything from the refrigerator, there's actually a movie that's inside it which is such a beautiful story, which is so pure and wonderful. The incredibly talented director, Zach Helm, has given me so much inspiration and comfort through these characters which he's created. He's made these characters which are so relatable to me, more so than any character I've ever seen or heard of before, and he's portrayed Asperger's in such a positive light. A movie specified for children has taught me so much about my own life, and how you just need that little bit of a push and you can release so much magic that's locked inside of you that you didn't even know was there. Maybe you're an Eric, who struggles to fit in and make friends. Maybe you're a Molly, who just can't release that sparkle that's inside of you. Maybe you're a Henry, you feel like a mutant and you don't know how to interact with everyone around you. Maybe you're an Edward Megorium, with a wild mind and crazy ideas, everyone thinks you're insane. Or maybe you're all of them, which is equally as wonderful. Don't let yourself be locked into these negative things though. Don't let these traits which people originally see be what define you. You're so much more than that, and each of these four people have got these amazing traits, which people just need to get to know better for them to be able to see. Be an Eric, because in the end, people learn to appreciate his fantastic brain. Be a Molly, because in the end, she discovers her sparkle. Be a Henry, because in the end, he learns how to communicate. He's not a mutant anymore. And most of all, be a Mr. Megorian. Be a rainbow of colour, embrace life and live it to the fullest. Don't let the world change you, and never lose that magic or that twinkle inside of you. Be optimistic and happy and odd and quirky and strange and all these amazing, wonderful things which make you, you. Your life is an occasion. Rise to it.